Hello everyone, this is Pippin Williamson with Pippin's Pages and Pippin'sPlugins.com. And in this part six of writing your first WordPress plugin, um, I'm going to take you through the actual creation of the settings form in the admin of our plugin. Uh, this the settings page is actually what's going to allow us to uh, have the user input their Twitter URL and any other settings that we will then use for the plugin. If you recall, um, our plugin so far outputs this little text block on the on. Uh, an individual post page that says follow me on Twitter. So the first thing that we're going to do with our options page is provide a text input that allows them to enter their Twitter URL. So rather than hard coding the URL into the plugin, we're going to allow the user to customize it themselves. Uh, so in the previous part, we actually wrote the options page that you can see right here. And you can see the link to it in my first plugin under settings, and we can see the content of our settings page. So what we're going to do in this part is actually write the settings forms. Uh, these are going to be the HTML form that takes all of the input values, the Twitter URL, and stores it into the database. Um, and that will then allow us to output it here in this Twitter link. So uh, this is getting a little bit more complicated, uh, so I advise that you follow along closely and pay attention, uh, but let's go and get started. So in order to do this, uh, what we first need, uh, once I find the right file, is we are going to add a couple more functions to our admin page.php. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a function that, that is basically going to register a setting with WordPress and this setting is going to be what is going to store all of our plugin options. Uh, when we register the setting basically it creates a field in the database in the options table and it's our unique field that allows us to put anything in there that we want. So to do it it's actually pretty simple. Uh, we're just going to write a simple function and it's going to be mfwp for my first WordPress plugin underscore register underscore settings. Keep it nice and simple. And then what we're going to do is use a function inside of this called register underscore setting. And then this parameter takes two options. One is called the settings group and the other one is the name of the settings. So in this case, I like to keep it really simple and just do this. Settings group and just like that. So this settings group is going to be used on the admin page itself to um, obtain and to basically set up each of the fields. And this is going to be the actual name of our option that we'll use uh, with the get underscore option function to retrieve the values from the database. OK, um, and now we have to connect this with an action hook. So we're going to add action. And it's uh, the one that we want to use is admin init. So admin initiation. And then we pass the name of the function, just like that. Uh, you should be pretty familiar with how the add action system works yet now. Um, so that has now registered our setting. Now, at this point, the setting is blank, but it is there. Um, so now what we're going to do, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. But what I like to do is actually store the contents of the MFWP settings. Uh, so remember, this is an option that is stored in the database. We're going to retrieve that and store it in a global variable. And in order to do that, what we do is this. We're going to go over here, and we're going to say MFWP underscore options equal get underscore option MFWP underscore settings just like that um, so remember this right here is the name of our setting that we registered over here so whereas this registers the setting this retrieves the setting okay um, and remember the setting is going to contain whatever we want it could be a simple text string it could be a serialized array it could be whatever we want in this case it's going to be an array of data um, and I'll explain that here in a little bit. Uh, so let's just add in a little comment real quick. Uh, retrieve our plugin settings from the options table. Okay, so our setting is registered and we have lo loaded it into a global variable. 
Now what we need to do is go over here to our options page function. Remember, this is the, the function that actually outputs all of the HTML for our options page that you see right here. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to set up the options form that will display here. The first thing we're going to do is call our global variable. Just like that. Uh, let's make sure the names match. Good. The reason I do this is we don't necessarily want to call this function all the time. The more we call it, the more resources we use. So by simply setting it up in a global variable, we can call the function one time and access it from anywhere. So in this case, we're simply um, saying use this variable, which is in the global scope. It's outside of our function, um, but it allows us to access all of the data inside of it. OK, so there's that. And now what we need to do is actually set up the HTML form, uh, which has the options. This is actually pretty simple. And it looks like this. Form method is post. Action equals options.php. And this is going to look the same for every single settings form that you set up for a plugin. Uh, it can look exactly the same. Uh, you don't have to change the action or anything like that. OK, and now let's close out the form just like that. OK, this is the form that is now, that will actually allow us to access the options table inside of WordPress. And now all we have to do is basically um, use what's called the settings field function. And it allows us to basically access our particular settings group inside of options.php. Uh, if this doesn't make sense quite yet, just go ahead and follow along and you'll see once we finish up. Settings fields. So basically, we are setting up the fields for the settings that we registered. And this is where we're going to use our group name right there. OK. And now what we can do is we can simply write all of our field inputs uh, with a special name, and everything will work perfectly fine. So uh, let me just, rather than try to explain that a little more, let me just show you. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to set up an H4 tag that is basically going to be our section title. Uh, so let's just call it Twitter information. Then I'm going to use a paragraph tag. This just sets up nice spacing. And we're going to add in a label. This is going to be the label for our form input. We'll give a class of description. Uh, description is actually a built-in class with WordPress, uh, so it'll look nice. Uh, four is going to be mfwp underscore settings. Now this four, this is very important that it matches the name of your settings group that you registered down here. And then we're going to add in a bracket and Twitter URL. What this basically says is that MFWP settings is going to be an array, so for the index Twitter URL inside of the array, we're going to store this data. That's what we're accessing. Okay, and now we're going to simply put in a message for this, uh, and this is, we're localizing the message. Um, if you're not familiar with localization, which you, actually at this point you probably are not, uh, but there, there, I wrote an extensive tutorial on what localization is, and basically it makes your plugin really easy to translate. Enter your... Twitter URL, uh, mfwp underscore domain. Uh, so what this is, basically mfwp domain is what's called the text domain, and it allows your plugin to automatically translate the text inside of this right here. Uh, I'm not going to explain any more than this. Don't worry about it. What this is going to do, let me just show you, is this. It simply outputs it as regular text. Uh, so for now, that's all you should worry about. But uh, I would advise that you get familiar with this right here, what's called localization. Uh, you don't have to worry about it too much right now, but eventually you should be using localization. Um, and actually, just to be consistent, we're going to go ahead and localize this string as well. Just like that. And you will see that that now displays correctly too. Okay, so we've entered our label, and now we need to enter our text input. And to do that, we simply write in input. Let's give it an ID, and this is going to be uh, this right here. It's going to be our ID, and that is also going to be our name. 
These are both extremely important, and they must match. Uh, so this, all three of these that you see highlighted in green should match exactly. Um, and now we're going to give it a type of text value. Uh, the value is important because what it's going to do is basically output the, the setting inside of the database. And in that case, it's going to be the global up here, and then Twitter URL right here. Okay, now I'm going to step back just a moment and explain again what we've just done. First, let me show you what it looks like. Here it is. Enter your Twitter URL, and we can see that's right there. Okay, let me let me kind of back up and re-explain this a little bit. So first of all, what we've done is we've registered a setting down here. This creates the option inside of the WordPress options table. We then call, we load all of the settings in that options table into the global variable called MFWP options. After that, in our admin page, we call that global variable right here so we can access the options. And then what we do is we simply set up an HTML form that that connects to the options.php, which is the core WordPress file that actually uh, controls all the settings. We set up the settings fields using the same name as the group name that we registered down here. That basically allows us to access all of these fields. And then we set up our input using the, the settings name from our register settings function with a unique index key inside of the array. Uh, so this MFWP settings is going to be a large array. Note, MFWP settings matches MFWP options. It is essentially the same thing. This is just the way that we uh, insert data into it, and this is the way that we retrieve data from it. Um, I always change the names when excuse me, settings and options, just to try and make it clear and keep that distinction. Um, settings, enter into, options is retrieved from, um, in my case, in the way that I've named it. So this is retrieving the Twitter URL, and this is saying enter the Twitter URL. So whatever this value is, is going to be entered into the Twitter URL option. Okay, I hope that makes sense, and now let me just go ahead and continue so that if it doesn't, maybe you'll see by example and having the finished product. So the last thing that we need to do here is simply int uh, add a submit button. So we're going to put in a paragraph tag with a class of submit, and again, this is actually a core WordPress class, so that will style it the way that we want. We add in another input. Type is submit. We're going to give it a class of button primary. This will make it our nice blue button. Value is going to be, we're going to localize it again. Oops, I didn't type that right. Underscore E. Save options. And that's it. Um, our form is now done and it should work fine. So actually, let's go ahead and test it. Uh, so let's go over here. First of all, you see our new submit button, and let's just type in HTTP twitter.com and hit save. And you see everything worked fine. It says that the, I mean, the fact that our page reloaded and our setting is still there means that the setting has been saved in the database, and we can now retrieve it and do whatever we want with it. Notice if I change it, twitter.coms, hit save. Up here it says setting saved, which is great. And now let's go to a different page and now go back to our page, and we see that our setting is still there. That's because it's stored inside of the database, and we are uh, displaying the contents of the option here in this input field. So um, what we can do now is we can actually retrieve this information from the database on the front end of the website, meaning in the function that we are here, where we are displaying the data um, on our post, we can actually now output our Twitter URL in here. And that's the last thing I'm going to do really quickly uh, before I let you go with this tutorial. And then I'm going to continue this in the next section by adding a couple more options that just show you what you can really do with options. Um, so we're going to open up our display functions.php file now. And first thing we're going to do, if you recall, we used our global variable up here to gain access to the options. We're going to simply enter that here. 
So now what we can do is this. Just like that. So what that basically says is output, uh, because we're doing this in a PHP string that is then returned, we can simply enter the, the name and the index of our option, which is mfwp underscore options Twitter URL, and it will actually output the URL that we saved in there. So let's take a look. Okay, now you see, if we look at the bottom left, it's going to twitter.com. If I click that, here we go to twitter.com. Awesome. Okay, so let's save this right now, and let's go to Pippin's plugins. Hit save. And now we refresh, and we see in the bottom left, it's going to twitter.com slash Pippin's plugins. So it makes it really easy to actually change uh, the the output of your plugin. It allows your users to customize it and say and use their own settings uh, versus having to hard code. So setting up an options page like this is extremely important when it comes to writing really high quality plugins that are really easy to use by uh, by the user. Uh, to give you an idea of where a plugin like this may go, let me just show you. The settings page for my Easy Content Types plugin has a huge variety of settings that each do a certain thing, and we have a variety of field types, check boxes, select menus, and date inputs, etc. So, what I'm going to do in the next section or two is I'm going to expand this options page to include a couple of options. Here's a couple examples of what we might do. We might include one that allows you to specify custom CSS to style this. We may include a background color picker, maybe a color picker, um, a color field for the color of the text. Um, maybe we'll include an option that allows you to display this Twitter link automatically on post or automatically on pages or custom post types, etc. So there's a whole variety of options that we can use. Um, it's not really limited to anything except your imagination. Um, but hopefully this will set the framework for how you do it. Um, I hope also that you're not, if any of this has been confusing, I hope that you're not daunted by it. Um, Ultimately, setting up the options page is actually really, really simple. Uh, if you look here, we have a full options page. Everything from the menu link to the HTML content to actually saving the options and retrieving them in 40 lines of code. Um, and this could even be condensed into a little bit less code if you wanted. Um, so, basically, Everything in here is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is just kind of get your head around the way that it works. So I hope you take the time to look at it and figure out and actually understand how it works. Uh, you don't necessarily need to understand how settings field or actually register settings works, but you need to understand that those are necessary. What you should really understand is how to add new options. So how do you go about adding another text option? Or how do you go about adding a text area? That's what I really hope that you grasp from this and understand so that you can go ahead and add those options yourself. Over time, you will gain a complete understanding of how settings fields or register settings, etc., works. Um, and once you do, you definitely won't be needing my help anymore. Uh, you won't be watching this tutorial. So take it, play with it. Uh, you can download the Work in Pro Progress plugin from the tutorial page. Let me know your feedback. Uh, please, I really appreciate your feedback. Uh, so anyway, thanks. Have a great day.